Good evening, everyone. Come on, I can. I think we can be louder than that. Good evening, everyone. All right. Thank you, brother, for that challenging message this evening. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Now we're going to become a little informal here. Okay, we're going, I'm going to call upon uh, three dear brothers. Um, John Jacob, John Matthew, and Binu Samuel to please come forward because this is going to be a very different session right now. We are going to have an open discussion from the experts in their individual field of where they come from. And uh, we're going to ask some questions. So as we prepare, why don't you all get up, stretch your hands, and maybe shake your hands with the next person beside you and say, it is a beautiful evening. We're going to have fun this evening. How's that? Can we do that? I would love everybody to get up and just get to know each other. I'm sure you've already known each other. It's been a wonderful evening of fellowship. And as you do that, can I also request you to please come forward because there are some empty chairs here because this is an intimate conversation that we're going to have with three experts over here. And we want to make this very informal, not very formal. So how about that? Can we do that? Yes? Come on, I want a participation from the crowd here. Can we do that? All right, come on. So I would like for you all to just move forward a little bit. Whoever can just come forward a little bit. There are some empty chairs here. So we can kind of be a little intimate and close as we ask these questions and listen. These are some very challenging questions that we are going to ask these experts here because, you know, family matters. Does family matter? Yeah? Yes? Yes. Family does matter because my son always says family is not just anything, it is everything. So true, isn't it? And I think that's what we'll do. So now I'm going to, as we, uh, let's, let's make this intimate. Let's uh, get the chairs up front here. Can I? What time? Okay. Okay. Let's get. What time? Can I have a mic? Well, before I get into anything, you know, as we warm up and as they give the mics to our dear brothers here, we're going to hear from them very soon. And so everybody is having a wonderful day today. Yeah. I didn't hear that punch in that. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, everybody understands Malayalam, right? I can speak Malayalam, I can talk Malayalam, but I cannot read and write Malayalam. Can you, is that all written all over my face? Um, <laughs> Some of you have heard this. Or moon book on Nagadarandao. Moon book on the Kalagadirando. E Panam Illa Turke, Patibuka Nore, Kadirando. Pana Illa Turke, Patibuka, Pana Lorke, Check Book, other Gadirando. Urupani Illa Turke, Facebook. So, having said that, you know, we need to laugh, we need to enjoy at the same time. Always cannot be at a serious note. I always say laughter is the best medicine. You heard that before, right? Laughter indeed is the best medicine. But if you laugh for no reason, you need medicine. <laughs> uh, you heard that. Now I, can, now I can hear the ice breaking here. So that's good. That's the way to start. Well, my friends, dear brothers and sisters, we are here to just talk about a few things. 
I know we are live on uh, video here, um, but at the same time, there are certain things that happens in our family, in our family life, wherever we are, whether we are out there in the public square, in the market square, wherever we are. Definitely, we need to represent the Lord very well and be a good ambassador for what we do, how we live, how we showcase the Lord Jesus Christ in everything that we do. Our attitudes, you know, I always say, the difference between a good day and a bad day. Do you know what that is? Your attitude. It all depends on how you look at that day, and that is what uh, the attitude is all about, you see. There are two things that will define you. Two things. Determination, if you have nothing. And your attitude, if you have everything. So it's so true that our attitude is the most important thing as we live in this crazy world, I would say. But at the same time, God gives us wisdom, He gives us knowledge, He gives us discernment to decide between right and wrong. So the true test of Christianity isn't in the church, but it is in the home. It is not how we put on uh, how saintly or how godly you act in the church, it's how your Christianity works in practical everyday life and living situations. If I can't live the Christian life in the home, then I'm just a phony. Have you heard this saying, intent is prior to content? You know, intent, your intention, if your intention is right, your content will show automatically. It's, it'll show on your face, it'll show on your demeanor, on the way you, you treat people, the way you shake hands with people, the way you, 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 know, you interact with people. It's so true. So, when we come to church, we come, we sing, we worship the Lord and we get in the spirit. I'm not saying that we are insincere, but it has to be demonstrated in the house or in the home also. I need to live the Christian life around those closest to me, whom I rub shoulders with daily, isn't it? My relationship with Christ should definitely affect my relationship with my wife, and because of my relationship with Christ, I should have a relationship, good relationship with my wife as well as my children. Isn't it true? It all begins at home, we say that. So now as I um, quickly introduce you know, we're going to take, these are three um, experts here, and I'm going to ask some questions, and I'm going to open it up a little to the crowd, but at the same time, we just have limited time within the next 40, 45 minutes. We need to try and finish this as, as good as possible, and um, I'm going to lay some ground rules. Have you heard the three rules of Texas? How many of you are from outside Texas? Raise your hands. Oh, there's a lot. Well, let me give you the first, the three rules of Texas. I don't know if you've heard that. <laughs> you need to hear that. <laughs> you know, if it moves, we hug it. If it moves, we hug it because we are hospitable people. If it doesn't move, we sell it because we are industrious. And if it argues, we shoot it because we are just, I'm just kidding guys. Texas is not that bad, okay? Welcome to Texas, all of you. We have a big state, we have a big heart also, and you'll see that. Let me get into the subject here. So we're gonna talk about three things. Inward, within the family, and uh, that is going to be addressed by Brother John Jacob. Uh, we call him uh, Saji, if I'm not mistaken, Saji. Um, and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you're a psychologist also, right? And I'm going to have, take a quick 30 seconds to talk about you. Why don't you do that? Just introduce yourself to the crowd. Saji. Yeah. I'm John Jacob, director of Agape Counseling Center, Patranteta. I'm visiting uh, this country. OK, OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Saji. You, can, uh, you don't have to get up, but uh, so that way you want to make it easy. OK, now we're going to talk about 
the outward social culture, basically, when you're out there in the world, you know, we come, we live in a world that has different worldviews, culture. I mean, you know, from where we come from, India itself is what? 18 languages, 1,116 different dialects, different ways of speaking. So you can imagine the diversity of India. I mean, that's just one part of the world, but we talk about, we are here right now in the US, isn't it? Yet we find people with different culture, different beliefs, and, and yeah. And we have an expert here uh, who is none other than our dear brother, John Matthew from Houston. Would you uh, say a few? I don't <laughs> okay. And then we have the upward, uh, spiritual, Binu Samuel all the way from Patanatita. You know, there are three things that I always, principles that I follow is look up, lean back, and lay on. Look up to the Lord always for, you know, with Psalm 121 says, I will lift up mine eyes under the hills for men's come at my help, right? And lean back, leaning back on family, that's what, we're going to talk about family, friends, whom we can lean back and continue to depend on them for strength every day of our lives. And lay on means standing on the promises of God that we can claim every time. So why don't I start with uh, our dear brother John Jacob. The first question that I have for you is healthy family relationships. What are they? Yeah, you, you can say. Yeah. Yeah. As we know, family is established to avoid aloneness or loneliness. So oneness, when you feel oneness, then you, feel, you don't feel aloneness. So oneness is one of the quality of a good family. And God is the first person in a good family. Then the relation will be best. Then. Transparency is another quality of a good family, where we can live without pretense. A good family is where we can live without pretense. Then belonging is another quality of a family. And meeting others' need and giving first priority, priority to others' need is the quality of another uh, 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 quality of a good family. How much? We feel Venus, Venus, the, but not I and you. When I die, we yeah, develop. The team you're talking yeah. about, right? Okay. So when there is no I and myself, and more we and Venus, uh, that is the quality of a good family. Okay. Then the, a good family has feeling of se sense of security. So Everybody security. should okay. feel secure in that, feel protected. So insecurity is the negative sign of a family. So dear brother, what are some ways to build a good, healthy family that is sound, that, that, that will, you know, I mean, we see families that are broken, that, that go different direction, the children come to a particular age. What is your um, um, advice of how we manage that as adults or as parents, as yeah. loving parents? First, we have to understand and the intention of God, why he established family. They even mentioned it to a million percent lonely. So when you are being with God, your spiritual aloneness will move away. But as a human being, we need relationship. They even turn to Stavarama on the family and church. These are the two institutions where we feel, we should not feel lonely. For yeah. the family, they even have the same manners like the parents. So each member of the family, when they have, when they give first priority to God, yeah. then they will honor God's word and give God's priority in their family life. For they who want to learn another bandha, one mutual relationship in Rajasthan. Yeah, okay. So, see, uh, God's view of family okay. and, and see your spouse as God's gift. Amen. Can we do that? 
ദൈവം തന്നതാണ് എൻ്റെ തക്കതുണ എന്നുള്ള ബിലീവ് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഗോഡ്സ് ഗിഫ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഹാൻഡിൽ വിത്ത് ദാറ്റ് റെസ്പെക്ട് താങ്ക് യു താങ്ക് യു ബ്രദർ ഐ എം ഗോ ടു ആസ്ക് ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ടു ബ്രദർ ജോൺ മാത്യു as christian families what should be our attitude towards diversity uh including and i may phrase this question how do we deal uh with sexuality homosexuality people of other races how do what is your view on that go ahead yeah. victor thank you for asking this uh, excellent and appropriate uh, question once the uh, president ronald reagan stated that there are simple solutions for complex problems although this question is important and baffling and complicated for a christian it is very simple more than 40 years i worked for jp morgan chase worked with uh, different types of people with a different uh, sexual orientation i never had a problem i used util- utilized my opportunity to testify witness the lord through my deeds and my actions we can see a guideline in the scripture after jesus said love your enemies matthew chapter 5 46 let me read that verse if you love those who love you what reward will you get are not even the tax collectors doing that verse 47 and if you greet only your own people what are you doing more than others don't even pagans do that so this is our principle guideline and today in our america society has been divided into special groups i call it identity politics for example for black people they have nwcp for hispanics la raza pita people for ethical interest of uh, interest of animals so if you are a christian you don't need all these groups to enforce the morality the state doesn't have to enact laws to enforce the morality proverbs chapter 12 verse 10 says the righteous care for the needs of the animals you don't need an animal protection agency yeah. if you are a good christian yeah. yeah yeah no brother what i'm trying to ask also we know it is sin right i mean uh, we know uh, we have to deal with such people for example i am an employer you know there are times when i have to uh, interview a few people and out of that sometimes i come across uh those kind of people so help me should i take a look at them judge them or throw them under the bus or i mean how would i accept them or definitely as a christian yeah you should never yeah. discriminate anyone based on their sexual orientation absolutely or we know that that's a law yeah but you know i can also take the law in different directions if i want to you know and i'm in, um, i'm i'm you know it's not a debate but at the same time how can i so as a christian you're saying that i have to take a look at his work ethics above all and be able to can i maybe? mention my one experience sure one uh, employee one person applicant came for um, uh, employment at a bank where i worked in yeah. 1980s and all the other employees saw the applicant and they called me told me that john don't hire him he say homosexual mm. then i looked up his resume and did the interview he fit perfectly for the job i i hired him they were surprised and he proved to be a wonderful employee and his personal life i didn't care about that as long as he performed his job and uh, i had no problem but finally he became now a manager senior vice president of 26 banks wow and okay. uh, what i did was i never looked his personal life and he was good for the job that's all a christian should care so we are saying that we shouldn't differentiate between being and behavior never ne- ne- okay. never good thank you thank you 
Thank you, Brother John. Please have a seat. Um, now we're going to talk about mission, missional family, and I'm going to call upon our dear brother Binu Samuel. Binu, can you just quickly in 30 seconds tell a little bit about you, what you do, and, uh, and then you can get into that. My name is Binu Samuel. I am placed in Kerala, the place called Patranthata. I teach in the Bible colleges. Uh, I did my master in theology and also I did the master in family life education. So last 25 years I am working among the children as well as last uh, two years I am focusing, focusing on the families. Mm -hmm. I do counseling and mostly I encourage the families and equipping the families to how to avoid the problems and how to confront the problems. Okay. So where does it all start? Um, you know, we talked about worshipping family, right? What are some points that uh, we can get from you on that? Actually, I love to talk about this subject. It's a very uh, big subject. Yeah, but, but we uh, have only two minutes. We have minutes. only, yeah, yeah I know that. I would love for you to condense it yeah. and give us, uh, yeah. Uh, we have heard about uh, missionary families. Yeah. But I'm going to talk about the missional families. So it there is, is a difference between missionary family and missional family. Yes. Okay. Because uh, missionary families, the families who are going out from their own uh, respective places and working in a different place. Okay. So that is called uh, missionary families. Okay. The mission missional families means the family who fulfills the mission of God in their own house and outside the house. Okay. They are the missional families. So if we want to call a missional family, the family should fulfill at least five characteristics. Okay. Number one is the family should be a worshiping family. Mm -hmm. It should be an affectionate family. Mm -hmm. It should be an attractional family. Mm -hmm. It should be a nurturing family. It should be an incarnational family. Wow. So this makes a, a missional family. I see. So you, you talked about affectionate, attractional, incarnational, yes. and nurturing. Yes. So these are some of the, and, and the first one you said was purpose, isn't it? Or uh, purposeful. So uh, has to have a purpose. Yes. And I know we'll come to that later. I would like to keep your uh, uh, thoughts very warm here. And let me come back to um, uh, Saji here again, uh, dear brother John uh, um, Jacob. Tell me, how do you deal with conflict within a family? I mean, you know, this is not perfect. You know, there is always, I mean, we have, I mean, you know, we have uh, arguments. Sometimes arguments really leads into fights. Sometimes it is the children not looking and not commanding. I mean, you know, you're not commanding respect from them. How would you, what is your advice on that? First, we have to understand conflict is essential and part of life. Yeah. And conflict cannot be avoided. Okay. But how we handle conflict is more important than yeah. uh, it makes it bad or good. Okay. So handling conflict uh, by, uh, to uh, resolve it, that's a skill we needed to resolve the conflict. So no matter what, come to the drawing table and try and resolve, resolve. it is the first thing. First we have to accept that there is a problem. Okay. That, that we are not, uh, sometimes we deal with the people. We are not handling the issue. Huh. So we have to define what is the issue. Not normally conflict end in personal conflict. That's uh, the con issue, issue is creating problem. Okay. So we have to define issue and handle the issue. Okay. That's the first thing. Okay. Mo uh, in most of the time, people deviate from the issue and uh, move to person, blaming the person. And finger uh, pointing each other, finger basically. Point, uh, judging the person yeah, right. and throwing family into the uh, conflict, greater right. family into the conflict. Right. And talk about uh, not part one particular issue, talk about many issues at, uh -huh. at one time. That never, uh, we cannot resolve many uh, issues at, at one time. So take one problem at a time and deal, uh, uh, define the issue and handle it positively. Yeah. Then that uh, we can uh, resolve the conflict. So, yeah. 
Very true and very well said. That is, you know, the devil is always out there attacking the family, yeah. right? I think it was Adrian Rogers who said, if you cannot feel the devil in your life, you're pretty much walking in the same direction. First, we should have an intention. Yeah. The, our discussion is to resolve conflict, not to win. Okay. Most of the time, people wa wants to uh, uh, proclaim that I am right, you are wrong. Correct. And uh, pointing their wrong. Uh, so to, somebody has to give in. Somebody has to yeah. um, be humble enough to give in. Spiritual. Who is more spiritual? And how do you find who is more spiritual, if I may ask? By uh, when the ego is, uh, when a person is ready to sacrifice their ego, okay. that's, that's a sign of spirituality. That is a sign of, okay, got it. That person will take initiation, accept his mistake, ready to ask forgiveness, say sorry is one, is one of the wonderful words that we oh. can solely, uh, solve conflict. You know that word, sorry? Wow. I think we all need that, don't we? That's what I do, first thing, I run and say sorry. Shelly, are you there? Can you vouch for me? Ego, ego, good and bad, sorry for it. Vastoma, Valera Satyama, yeah, yeah. And that's already an atme of the very parent. Correct. Yeah. Sadhana, I am starting in the attitude like I am Paranapum. So, attitude Namako you Vanam, know, to be closer to the Lord, to be humble, and, 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 and to really, if we know we are in the wrong, to be able to say sorry and to, and, and, and to humble down before. Right? Win win attitude on the girl tend to win Jaya. Win Jaya. Number does spouse in the umbel talk in the Tolvi Ella Jaya. Hey, amen. Kanda. That's why I say behind every successful woman is a confused man. <laughs> it's the other way around, you know, but amen. That's a good thank you. Thank you, brother. Talk and Sonda Bangali, Kudumang and Rambilo, Tada, Manasilla, Nata, Rambilum, Parasi, public in Ubilum, Avasanam, Peribo. Peribo, yeah. It leads to the public. I got to Lenda, run to him out of scream jail, the Isle Carmur and Gaikan, and I got a work on the Nalur, Nalur, Kadaya, but anyway. So let me come back to be, um, John, to um, John Jacob. Okay. Here's a question. Is it appropriate for Christian family to get involved in a political situation or political activities? Can you answer that for me? It is uh, very important for Christians to get involved in political activities. Just imagine when America got independent in 1776, all the Christians, they say that, well, our citizenship is in heaven. We belong to heaven, and God is on the throne, and he's sovereign, and we don't have nothing to do, we don't have anything to do with the government. If atheists took over American government, what would have been the condition of USA now? What would be our condition? We won't be here. So it is important for Christians to vote. It is our responsibility for every Christian to vote for the leader who promote our Christian values. So it is important is what yeah, you're saying, basically. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. How would, if I'm going to vote, and the candidate out there is not a believer, yeah. should I cast my vote for or, him or her? That's a very wonderful question. Yeah. The example, the whole world can copy from Indian Christians. In India and Kerala, we don't have Christians uh, as candidates. After all, we are not electing a pastor. And in India, the Christians, to survival, they vote for secular parties like Indian National Congress in Kerala, Kerala Congress, and many other parties. And the Hindu fanatics candidate may be more morally perfect. But we don't vote for them. We are voting for a person who is a fornicator, maybe an alcoholic. I have, because based on policy in Kerala and India, Christians vote it, and that should be a universal application in America and everywhere. So you're saying that we can vote for that person? Of course, you can. You know, by policies. Because the only person qualified is the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfect. Yeah. And so, only par there is no, parties, uh, no party is perfect. OK. OK. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Uh, back to Binu. Binu, you talked about the four attributes, the four 
specialities of a mission of fan. Yeah? Five, five, five yeah. quality. Yeah. Can you expand on inca incarnational family? You said making your home an outreach center. Yeah. Right? Can you expand on that a little bit? Yes. Incarnation, the word is used for the uh, coming of our Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. He left the glory and he left heaven. He came down to this world and he died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Yeah. So as a Christian family, are we ready to leave our comfort zones and go to the world okay. and share the gospel? Okay. Maybe in the different ways. Okay. Can you yeah. talk about some of those ways or what is the best yeah, way a family can do an outreach within the family? Like, of course, the church has got outreach programs and everything, but from the with the family itself, what, is, what are some ways you would recommend? Yeah, one of, one of my example I will tell you. In Bangalore, uh, where I did my course, yeah. uh, the organization decided to do something for the society. Yeah. So what they did on the Independence Day, they all wore the dress of the uh, sweepers and went to the street okay. and joined with the sweepers and they were sweeping the road and all. Wow, okay. Then, the end of the day, they call all the sweepers and share the gospel. Okay. So what happened today, there is an assembly ah. among these sweepers. Wow. So, so this is the incarnational... Got it. Leading by example yes. is what you're saying. That is what... Yes. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Now, what about nurturing family? Nurturing family, ah. um, the family has to have concern about everyone's growth. The yeah. No, making our family a discipleship center. Okay. So our children, our family should learn the word of God from our family. Okay. It means husband has the, uh, the should teach the wife yeah. or the wife can also teach me, yeah. the husband. Absolutely. And the parents should teach the children. Yeah. And other, fa you know, those who are neighbors also can come to our family yeah. and learn the word of God. Got it. Got so it. nurturing should be happened in our family. Mostly we say it should be in the assembly, but yeah. it should begin in the family. Yeah. The family should become a discipleship center. Very good. Thank you very much. Yeah, very true. Actually, my mentor, um, uh, Dr. Ravi Sakurai says it like this, if you, you cannot lighten any load until you feel the pressure in your own soul. So true, isn't it? You cannot lighten any load until you feel the pressure in your own soul. Um, let me come back to Saji. Um, I think we talked about healthy family, we talked about providing support for each other. Um, did we talk about how to work together as a family? What is your, uh, you know, and um, um, some parents are very strict in their homes, you know, and sometimes it goes the other way. Children disrespect, you know, there's a time when it comes, so how would you balance or what is your advice to balance that kind of relationship? What would your advice to be to the parents, as well as what can they expect out of the children when the children is very naughty or very uh, is rebellious? What what would your uh... and well we can uh, tell there are basically three or four type of parenting. Yeah. One is authoritarian parenting. Yeah. That where one person is taking decision yeah. and the other uh, needs and feeling he decides which is right or wrong. No, okay. That uh, is a one man show. Yeah. Then the other extreme is permissive parenting, where we are just pro giving pro uh, provisions and providing for the needs and not discipline, not correction, no uh, nothing like right. that. Right. But an authoritative parenting is where we are the head of the children. Correct. As parents. Yeah. So we should keep the authority over the children. It's a God-given authority. Okay. That headship. But we have to be a head like Christ-like head. Yeah. Same like, yeah. That's, then, then we can use another word. It's a graceful parenting. Because we are children of grace. And our children should grow in grace. Yeah. So our family should be a, a exercise and enjoy the graceful parenting. Very true. 
And I think that can only happen with God on your side, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. talking about grace, one quote that comes to my mind is, when you run alone, it's called a race, but when God runs with you, it's called grace. And I think we need God in every aspect of, uh, whether it's parenting, whether it's instruction. Um, so, how do we overcome sometimes um, a very rebellious child or a, or a teenager, or, you know? I mean, how, how can you overcome a certain situation? I think that parenting, um, we have to do graceful parenting from the very childhood onwards. Okay. Uh, but I observe generally here is uh, we are become more permissive parenting where the, uh, the individualistic culture there is lot of I yeah. and we leave children very early. Leave means biblical term, leave. Got it. We are too early. Too early, okay. And in, in our place… You mean get them out of the house? Is that yeah, what you're talking in, about? Yeah. yeah, in mentally, physically, Physical, spiritually, okay. everything as, in okay. a, aspect. I'm, we are not having control or authority over them. Yeah, okay. That doesn't mean that uh, we have to take decision. Uh, all decisions and infinity parent. I'm not talking about that. Yeah. I'm talking that uh, we should give the spiritual authority over the children mm -hmm. and we have the right to discipline them. Yeah. Discipline includes training, education, correction and uh, uh, discipline is there. Yeah, yeah. So we have to discipline the children okay. because in, by birth they are not disciplined. We believe in a sinful uh, nature of uh, sinful nature in human being. Yeah. So as a child he is not uh, not a disciplined person. Yeah. So it is God's uh, God given authority over the parents that they have to do the parenting yeah. by a proper discipline. Yeah. That where we have to give education training correction as well as discipline. And everything should be done in love, basically. In love, right? Oh, so, yeah. love and grace. Yeah, we have to exercise that uh, grace and yeah. love in our family yeah. so that they will, they should experience. Automatic. God is the good model of graceful parenting. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, Brother John Matthew, I think we're running out of time. We have a few more minutes. Um, what should Christian families do at a time like this, as in the days of Noah? And that is our theme here, as in the days of Noah. What, what is your... Uh... Uh, as in the days of Noah, yeah. I believe that uh, this is a time has reached, just like uh, Noah's time, because uh, as, as uh, many of you may not know that, the time of Noah, yeah. there were seven million people. People say 1,000 or one million, but seven million people. Yeah. And, uh, we, and the population of the Earth is seven billion now. And the United States and Europe has already, they have legalized the same-sex marriage. The time of Nova and the Sodom has come. Yeah. So I believe strongly the rapture is going to be very soon. That's my opinion. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Please have a seat. I think we have now just around five minutes before us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open um, for some questions from the crowd. Uh, if you have a couple of relevant questions to the topic that we're discussing, I would love for uh, you to ask that. We have three experts here. They definitely um, are thorough in their background of what they're sharing. So would love to see if you have any questions uh, or you would like to give a comment. But let's be positive about the comment because I'm really opening up this to the floor. So if you have an itching question that you would like to ask, I can, I can take a couple of questions to each of them. Nobody there? No questions? So then, wow, we can wrap it up soon then, isn't it? We talked about attitude, huh? Right? To have the right attitude. I always say time decides who you meet in life. The heart decides who you want in life and the attitude decides who stays in your life. So true, isn't it? And that is what we heard uh, uh, just now. I think if we have the right attitude, intent will automatically show what we contain and what our content is. 
So I'm going to just give each of you two, two minutes to just wrap up with a final comment. Is that good? Would you like to do that? Please, I'll start with you. Yeah. Since it is a family conference, now just we were talked about the family. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have family mission statement? How many of you have family mission statement? Can you raise your hands? Praise the Lord. I could see one hand. Okay. If not, this is my humble request before you leave the, from this family conference. You should have a family mission statement. Not only that, you have to write down and hang in your private room or in your bedroom and every day make a checkup. Are you fulfilling this mission statement in your life? Because God wants every family should be a missional family. It means our family should be a worshiping center. Our family should be a fellowship center. Our family should be a relationship center. Our family should be a mission center. Our family should be an outreach center. So if we can fulfill this through our family, definitely we can bless the world through our family. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Bino. Sadi, can you give us a couple of minutes? <clears throat> family is the institution God has established the very beginning of mankind. And God has a great purpose behind that uh, institution. Understand that institution. Uh, the intention of God and purpose of God behind family and keep it. Now, S Satan is attacking family. We are living in a world, in a country where two by third of the families are breaking. And there is very severe attack against family. And Satan know that if we, if we are able to destroy family, then we, he can destroy God's plan. That's go, uh, Satan's intention. But ask children of God, we have to stand firm for the purpose of God and uh, we have to uh, keep our family healthy and uh, take every effort and, take, uh, and give importance for, for family life. And if you are able to give priority to family as God gives, we can maintain a good family life in this world. And I think that will be a, an example and be, uh, example and, and a witnessing in this world, uh, keeping a good family as God intent. Thank you. Yeah. Every society in the world has a special culture, common things binding them. So, but God told me, gave me an insight one time. When I die, I won't be an Indian. I won't be black or white or brown. So, as Christians, we should have a biblical worldview. Our views, when we vote and when we act in the society, should not be based on our background or ethnical or natural or geographical. Biblical worldview. That's the only thing I have to inform everyone uh, this evening. And that's the thing I understand when, when I die, whatever the Lord is going to ask me at the judgment seat of Christ, can I answer properly? Thank you all. Thank you, dear brothers, for uh, giving us some insight into some of the questions we had this evening. Um, Definitely, we need to take something as we have listened to these experts speak about three different subjects here. Um, within the family, the social culture, and of course the spiritual side of it. And I think all three of you, why don't we give them a very big round of applause this evening for uh, sharing some insights into this. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah.